Today, me and my two other friends are going to be surviving 100 days in the brand new 1.19 Minecraft scary snapshot update. In hardcore, of course. Deep underground lives a brand new ancient city where the warden lies. Can we take this warden on and survive the next 100 days? Well, you're gonna have to stick around to the end to find out. Anyways, this is 100 days in 1.19 Minecraft hardcore trios edition. We spawned in and off in the distance we found a village. It seems like all of our videos start this way. Anyways, we ran over to it and started breaking a tree down. I crafted a crafting table and then using that I crafted a wooden axe and pickaxe. I took the blast furnace from one of the village buildings and then stole some of the cobblestone off the walls and floor to upgrade my pickaxe and axe to stone. I collected a bit more cobblestone and then raided the rest of the village, taking whatever we saw, such as this stone cutter. I found a mine in the ground so we started mining, collecting a ton of coal and iron. Oh yeah, this creeper also nearly blew me up as well well. Anyways, we went further down into the cave collecting all the iron I found until I had around 30 total raw iron. I saw my friend killing one of the iron golems, so I thought I'd do a little trolling and break the block beneath her. Luckily, the iron golem was only one shot and it didn't kill her. I scavenged through the rest of the village a little bit longer until we finally left. While I was exploring, my other friend who would left the village quite a bit earlier actually found another one and looted the blacksmith. But inside the blacksmith, there were a few good items. There were diamonds, iron armor, obsidian, and a few other cool materials. I just ran around for a little while longer until in the night I came across a second village of this episode and of course I slept in it too. We started the following day by eliminating another iron golem from this world. I also collected a bunch more crops from the farms and then ran around for a little while until off in the distance we found a ruined portal. Making our way over to the ruined portal, inside the chest was a gold sword with sharpness 5 and a gold sword with silk touch along with a few other materials. We collected a ton of spruce logs from the nearby forest as we'd probably use it for the house build in the future. After that we ran around for a little while longer until off in the distance we found a third village. I crafted a stone hoe and then broke a few hay bales which we could use later on for a food source when we ran out of food. Apart from the hay bales we just left the village in search for that house location until we found what seemed like a decent place for the base. It was a relatively flat area surrounded by mountains and it honestly looked pretty cool. We crafted iron shovels and then all got to work, removing some of the unwanted hills and with the extra dirt we now had, I started terraforming the land a little to get some extra space for our house build. Once we had finished the terraforming and the removal of the dirt hills, we crafted a few extra beds and then went to sleep. We started day 3 working on our brand new house. The main block that we would use for this house is obviously going to be spruce wood because spruce wood is definitely the best block in the game. While our other friend worked on building that house up, me and another friend went over to another flattish land so we could build up a massive farm so we wouldn't have to worry about food in the future. I crafted a bucket and then started placing water all over the land so we could then soon till the land of course for the crops. After adding the water sources, I moved on to tilling the land and to speed up the process while I was tilling the dirt, the seeds were also being planted as well just to save some extra time. I crafted a few extra hoes and then continued tilling the land for the rest of the day. We also absolutely destroyed this horse. In hindsight, we probably didn't need to kill the horse, but it's too late now. We spent the rest of day three tilling and watering and also planting the seeds, doing the same process to a few other layers of the mountain as well. We seriously won't be running out of food anytime soon because once this farm is fully grown, we were going to get so many carrots, potatoes, and wheat it's honestly insane. For the rest of day 4, we spent it making this farm, building it up even bigger and better. Going back and forth crafting more stone hoes as well because quite honestly, those stone hoes don't last long whatsoever. They break so fast. While we were doing these farms, the house was also obviously still getting built up and decent process was starting to be made. In one of the mountains that surround us, there was a massive cave entrance covered in lava. So we were really curious to see what was inside that cave. So off we went to explore the cave. Inside, we were extremely disappointed. Sure, there was a few rooms 
mind doubt that we could possibly even turn this into a storage area, maybe, but there really wasn't anything other than the odd dripstone on the floor or ceiling. In fact, there weren't any ores either. There was a room full of water, but barely any ores inside there as well. So we just left possibly to never return. Yes, this was a complete waste of time. Anyways, we made our way out of the cave back to see more progress being made on the house. Sure, this was also a pretty slow process. I mean, two to three days have already been spent on the house already, but it's all right because we had two other people who can make even more progress in the world. Anyways, that was a quick update on the house back to see what we were doing. We wanted to make a mine down to Y level negative 53 or something, whatever diamond level was. However, if we were to make a staircase, that would just take way too long. So we decided to make a bubble elevator, but minus the bubbles for now because we didn't have any soul sand or kelp. I mined down the first side and almost drowned trying to get back up to the surface and then moved on to the other side. Once I made it down to the bottom, I would wait for someone to bring some fence gates down and yes, I almost drowned a second time coming back up to the surface. Back up to the surface, we noticed that some of the crops had start to grow. So we harvested them all and planted even more to fill the farm in even more. And now that was done, it was time to start getting rich in this world. While the builders stayed back up to the surface to make more progress on the house, me and my other friend started mining. And <laughs> mining we did. In fact, one minute into this mining session, I mined directly into an eight vein of diamonds. Pretty lucky, huh? We mined into even more diamonds, but this time it was only a vein of four. But not too long after this one, we found another eight vein. Crazy luck on those diamonds. But something even cooler was when I spent five to ten minutes strip mining without any luck. So instead of going back to that bubble elevator, I decided to just mine straight up to the surface. After I started mining up to the surface, I actually mined into a cave. However, this was no ordinary cave. This was in a biome called the Deep Dark. And for those who don't already know what the Deep Dark biome is, it's a new biome which the warden spawns in. So right underneath our house, we have an easy access to take on the warden later on in this episode. Stinky around so I didn't make any noise because I didn't want the warden to spawn, I made my way around the area. I wanted to explore this place a little bit and inside one of the chests was an enchant book. But this enchant book was one of the new enchants. This was called a swift sneak enchant. This will definitely be used for our armor set later on because it allows us to sneak faster. Since I wanted nothing to do with the warden at the moment, we came back up to the surface and crafted an enchant table. And then we made a parkour course leading to the side of a mountain. In hindsight, this probably wasn't practical whatsoever. I guess we were just trying to be fancy or something. Anyways, at the end of the parkour course, we started digging out a room inside the mountain and this room would be the place where we would have our enchant table. From the deep dark biome, the place that the warden spawns that I found from earlier, a few days ago, I collected some of the soul sands, meaning we can officially finish our bubble elevator. So that's what we did. Almost drowning in the process, but eventually that was done. And then we extended our sugarcane out a little bit more. Pretty basic task right there. Then we went to a nearby lava lake next to our house and mined up a few extra pieces of obsidian so we could make our nether portal. However, we weren't quite ready for the nether just yet yet, so we just continued on the house build. Now that I think about it, saying we worked on the house doesn't really fit the situation too well, because to be honest, two of us didn't really do anything on the house whatsoever. Eh, moving on. I crafted iron armor for everyone, and then we started mining out the tiniest room possible inside a hill to hide our nether portal in it. We crafted a nether portal and then went through where we would spend the next few days running around in the nether, hopelessly looking for the nether fortress. It's really annoying with these snap snapshots because Optifine doesn't exist for these snapshots just yet, so we had to run around the nether with fog blocking the majority of all our views. Eventually, after running around for a day and a bit, we found the nether fortress off in the distance. We bridged over some lava to get to the fortress, that was pretty risky, and then we spent the rest of the day looking around in it for some time. When we were in the fortress, I found a blaze spawner, so we decided to kill a few blazes before deciding to return back home. And what did we do once we finally made our way back home? Well, let me tell you, it was finally time to complete the house. So the builder of our group spent the next few days building up the walls and then the roof and so on. How literally every house is built. But anyways, eventually after 13 days in this world, the house was finally complete. And to be honest with you, it doesn't even look that bad anyways. So I'm pretty happy with this house build. 
Now that the house was complete, we could move on to another task, and this time it was to collect a bunch of iron. This iron would be used to help with the small project that we were doing in a couple of days from now. We went over to an exposed cave and then mined up every bit of iron ore we could find. We also found some gold and lapis where I mined that up as well just for the future. Who knows, we might need that later on. Fighting off a ton of mobs as well, we made our way out of the cave as we didn't really need anything else other than the iron at this current time. And returning back to the base after that mining trip, we spent this time waiting for all of our iron to smelt. It was just a chill day today. We didn't really get anything else in this world done on this day, so yeah, we just took a break basically. However, no more time will be wasted. We quickly started the next day by harvesting our farm and then replanting it all of course this farm was starting to get very big and now all the iron had smelted we crafted up a few rails and a few minecarts as well and then using those minecarts we made a railway to just outside of our house to the nearby village so we could easily transport villages over to our house using the railway system we trapped a few villages in their house and then slowly brought them over one by one on the minecarts and then trapping them on the outside of our house with the leftover iron i crafted everyone the final pieces of iron needed for the full iron armor and then we went back over to the nether portal and then went into the nether and made our way over to the nether fortress now we were in the nether fortress we killed all the wither skeletons in our site i'm sure you know exactly where this was going we killed all the wither skeletons for their skulls and after quite some time i had no luck however the others managed to get the skulls necessary so now we had three skulls and we finally made our way back home Returning back home, we made our way back down into the mines and we got ready to summon the wither. This was a very dumb idea considering we only had iron armor. But ignoring the risky situation that we'd be put in, we summoned the wither. It was now time to kill it. We all got extremely low in health in some situations since we only had an iron sword and axes to our names. But anyways, fighting the wither for quite some time, we had many close encounters to death. But somehow, we managed to kill the wither. I'm extremely surprised the builder didn't die, but that's a good thing though because if we did die we would have had to restart the entire world which is kind of inconvenient besides that while fighting the wither it also exposed some diamonds so we took those as well and then made our way back up to the surface and now we were back up in our house we put all our materials together and crafted the beacon this was also very poor planning on our behalf because we completely forgot you needed over 200 iron blocks or something to power it anyways now we had the beacon we started working on the villager trade and breeding area so we could give them something to actually do because honestly right now they're just stuck in some random box in minecarts and if we didn't do anything about it they would be stuck there for quite a long time we decided to build this villager area inside of a mountain as it would be quick and easy and honestly so we didn't have to worry about building fancy houses or anything maybe just the decoration later on but that's easy and one villager trading area completed it was now time to start moving the villagers into their new home Home to work for us for the rest of their lives. We recycled the rails from the transportation process and then pushed the villagers over in their minecarts so now they were in their new home. And now that they were in their new home, we placed a few beds inside and then gave them some bread as well so they could start the breeding process so we could get some more villagers. And since we didn't particularly want to wait too long for these villagers to breed, we went straight into giving our current villagers a profession. We needed a couple of enchants so we decided to give both our current villagers a lectern so they would receive the enchanter profession or whatever it's called. We spent quite some time trying to get the fortune 3 trade as it would be very useful in helping us to get the diamond armor we would need later. After changing the profession for quite some time we actually got a mending trade. We weren't trying to get this trade but we'll certainly take it as well. We gathered up all our emeralds and a book and traded with the mending villager so we could lock the trade in and then we continued with our other villager so we could hopefully get that fortune 3 trade. Trade. After some time had passed, we finally got the second villager to give us the Fortune 3 trade we were looking for. Man, those villagers are very picky and annoying to deal with. And to end this process, one of our friends traded with the villager to lock in the Fortune 3 trade as well. Now we had the Fortune 3 book to use, we crafted an anvil with our leftover iron from the previous mining session. And then we moved on to adding the Fortune 3 book onto a brand new diamond pickaxe. And now that's complete, we can move on to the next phase of our 100 day journey which was to get full diamond armor we made our way back
back down into the mines and started our long journey to collect a ton of diamonds for full diamond armor, obviously. I got the others to mine for me, and that's definitely not because I'm lazy or anything. It was because I wanted to preserve the durability on my diamond pickaxe. And now that I actually think about it, this mining process could have gone a lot faster if I had just crafted an extra pickaxe to help out. Eh, too late now. Now, after a very long mining session, we returned home, and here's exactly what we ended up with. We had a lot of diamonds now, definitely enough to get us full diamond armor and some tools as well, which is exactly what we crafted using those diamonds. And now we all had full diamond armor, we needed to enchant it. So we went over to our enchant table room and gave it a few enchants. They certainly weren't good, but considering we had little amounts of XP at the moment, it should do for now. Now that we were extremely stacked with our brand new diamond armor and tools, we went back to the nether once again. However, it was now time to collect other materials. Now we were in the nether, we once again returned to the nether fortress, but this time it was to kill some blazers. We needed blaze rods, so we spent quite some time killing these blazers, and once we had enough blaze rods, we moved on to the warp forest biome to take out some endermen for their ender pearls. We could have also traded with piglins, but we didn't really want to waste our gold to trade with these piglins, so we just stuck with killing endermen. And after collecting ender pearls and blaze rods, we wanted to quickly come back home and make a new storage area since we had a ton of items and materials that we needed to store. We wanted it to be easily accessible and fairly hidden as well, so we decided to mine into the mountain underneath our house. We made a fairly long room in this area and then started the process of placing a ton of chests. This was going to be a pretty big storage room, and also the way these chests were placed made it look pretty cool as well. All we need to do now is to decorate the area, but that's something to do later on. We started the following day by doing a little bit of farming. We harvested the carrots, potatoes, and wheat, and then moved on to the sugarcane as well. And then we went to get out some cows. If we wanted to make bookshelves or just simply books or something later on, then we were going to require leather. So that's why we decided to go out looking for these cows to bring back home. And once we had some cows, we trapped them in a hole under the ground while we started building up a cow farm area. Obviously, this was going to be out of spruce as well. And finally, to end this cow session, we bred the cows as well. Moving on from the cow session, we started the following day by crafting up a brand new diamond pickaxe, and then we put it into the enchant table in hopes to get the efficiency enchant. I then combined it, the new pickaxe with my fortune 3 pickaxe in the anvil, and then crafted another diamond pickaxe to combine with my new pickaxe in hopes to get efficiency 2. That was a very complicated way of explaining it, but basically we wanted efficiency 2 as it would allow us to instantly break netherrack in the nether, which is exactly what we were just about to do. That's right, we went over to the nether in attempts to get some ancient debris, but since this was taking a massive hit to our pickaxes, we brought over some TNT which was obtained from a buried treasure a little while back, and also some beds that we got from multiple villages, and used those to get even more netherite. After that netherite mining trip, we came back home and smelted all our ancient debris, turning it into netherite scraps. And then, combining the netherite scraps with our spare gold ingots, we could now craft up two new netherite ingots. However, we wouldn't actually use these until later on, basically until we get better enchants and stuff. You know the deal. I also crafted up three new bows and then got one of my friends to enchant my bow for me since I no longer had any more XP levels, especially after making that diamond pickaxe a few days ago. Now, with our brand new bows and blaze rods, along with those ender pearls from earlier, it was time to go and fight the ender dragon. We spent the rest of day 45 running around in attempts to find the stronghold. Trying to locate the stronghold took quite some time since it was over a thousand blocks away. But eventually the pearl went down, so we also mined down and found the stronghold. And then inside the stronghold, we looked around trying to find the portal room. It was now time to head off to the end. We entered and started shooting out all the crystals. You know how all these dragon fights go. We shot out all the crystals and then moved on to bowing the dragon. Since we were apparently terrible with the bow, it took way longer to kill the ender dragon than it probably should have. But after hitting the dragon with our swords a few times and getting the final bow shots, we took the ender dragon out. We collected all the XP and then located the end gateway, where it would now be time to get everyone an elytra. After many days of running around in the outer end island, we came across a few end cities that didn't have the ship. However, after more persistence, we managed to find exactly
exactly what we were looking for, and we finally got the very first elytra. We took the elytra out of the end ship and then spent the next few days running around in the end trying to collect two more elytras for the other two friends. Now it was time to come back home to complete our next goal. First, we gave one of our villagers the profession that would give us the trade for the Woodland Mansion map. We bought one off the villager and then spent a very long time trying to locate this Woodland Mansion. We didn't actually know how long this would take us exactly since we had never actually used one of these Woodland Mansion maps before, but eventually we found the direction we had to run in and then we ran. Turns out this mansion was over 10,000 blocks away, which that wasn't very fun to run to at all. But after many days spent running for this Woodland Mansion, we finally found it. That took a very long time. But it's all good now because we could do exactly what we came for, and that was to collect totems. We ran all through the mansion, looking through all the rooms, trying to find those illagers, the mobs that would drop the totem of undying. We spent the rest of the day collecting a few totems, killing all the illagers we saw, and managed to get at least one totem for everyone. And eventually, after running around the mansion for a little while longer, we noticed there were no more illagers, so we could come back home, which we spent the next few days running back home. Now, returning back home, we started the next few days by crafting up a few shulker boxes, and we were about to fill these shulker boxes up as well. We all went to the top of a mountain off in the distance and then started shearing leaves off the trees. We spent quite some time shearing these trees as we needed around 1,500 total leaves for the project we were just about to start. Now that we had collected all those leaves, along with a few other materials, we started returning back to the stronghold, running around for quite some time because once again, the stronghold was over a thousand blocks away and we didn't quite yet have enough materials to craft fireworks to use our elytras. In the stronghold, we built up a quick nether portal in the portal room and then went back through the portal to the end. To start putting all those leaves to a good use, since we currently didn't have an easy way to get XP, we decided to build an Enderman XP farm. This farm was actually designed by Shulkercraft. We built out over the void around 120 blocks and then we started building up a platform and then we started building up the XP farm as well, using all the leaves we had collected from earlier. We decided to use leaves for this build since it was one of the easiest blocks to collect a lot of really quickly at the current stage that we were in this game. We built out a big spawning platform on the top of the farm for the Enderman to spawn, and then did the thing with the Endmite, and now we had a fully working one-hit Enderman XP farm. And it was now time to put the farm to good use. One of the goals for this episode was to get insanely good armor, so that's exactly what we spent our time doing. Going back and forth from the Enderman grinder and the enchant table, which we actually made a little room underneath the grinder for our enchant table, we managed to get some decent enchants on all our armor, ranging from both protection 3 to protection 4, along with a few other enchants. After quite some time, we ended up with a decent amount of enchants on all of our armor. And to change things up a little bit, we spent the next few days back at the overworld collecting up a ton of materials. We went over to a nearby cave and started mining up a lot of cobblestone. I think in total, we need around two to 3,000 cobblestone, along with a few other materials, so we have a lot of work ahead of us. We needed these materials as we were just about to start building up another farm, mainly for gunpowder. However, this farm also produces a bunch of other mob loot as well. Oh yeah, this farm was also made by Shulkercraft. Anyways, like the Enderman XP farm, we started building it up. We built out a massive platform on the bottom and then started building up smaller platforms, making around 10 of these in total. Then moving on to the final massive platform on top, and now we could finally put this brand new mob farm to use and hopefully collect a ton of gunpowder. And putting the new farm to good use, we did. We spent the following day AFKing the farm in hopes to get at least a few stacks of gunpowder so we could start our next project. Returning back to the game after AFKing, we used the gunpowder to actually craft a few fireworks, finally giving our elytras a good use. Anyways, with our new elytras, two of us started flying around looking for a large patch of sand while the other person stayed back to continue AFKing the mob farm. And once we found the sand patch, we started mining all the sand we could, getting around one to two shulker boxes worth of sand in the process. Now, with the sand from the 
the previous day's mining session and the extra gunpowder from the AFKing session, we put it all together and crafted up a ton of TNT. I had around 30 to 40 pieces of TNT and the others had a few stacks combined. So we spent a few days going through the nether, blowing up a ton of TNT until we finally had enough ancient debris for everyone to get their full netherite armor. We came back home and smelted all the ancient debris we managed to collect in this time, then combined the netherite scraps with gold to turn them into the ingots, and then with those ingots, we crafted netherite armor for everyone. Now, the next day of cave farm that we were going to build is kind of a necessity as well, as it would allow us to get the max beacon as soon as possible. So, using another one of Shulkercraft's designs, we started building up an iron farm that, when completed, would make us around 1,700 ingots per hour. This was going to be extremely overpowered. However, we wanted to make something that would get us a ton of iron fast, so we would have enough time to make the max beacon before the end of the video. This farm was kind of complicated to build, but honestly, not really either. And just as I said before, we wanted to get the max beacon before the end of the video. So we did what had to be done, and that was AFK once again. This took up quite a lot of our time, but that was needed to make the max beacon and to make sure we could survive against the warden. We were not going to take any shortcuts when fighting the warden soon. So after many days of AFKing this farm, here's all the iron that we managed to collect. We turned all the iron into ingots and then mined a hole down to the ancient city where the warden would spawn. We placed down the beacon and then we made a ton of noise which would make the warden to spawn. As soon as it spawned in, it aggroed on me and I took a ton of damage. So I had to run away. We all hit it as much as we could and I even found a way to kind of cheese the fight, building up as if it was an iron golem at a certain height level it actually couldn't hit you anymore. So we managed to take the warden out, however as we were going to leave another spawn so we were forced to fight that one as well. We managed to actually quite easily take this warden out but as we were leaving once again another spawned and this time it actually used my totem. However after a little while fighting the third warden we managed to kill it and we got out of there safely. So that was 100 days in 1.19 Minecraft Hardcore Trios Edition. If you enjoyed this one, maybe consider checking this video out next.